Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna to talk about this system right here, which is the Lenovo Think Center M75Q Gen 2 Tiny or Tiny Gen 2. If you're sitting there thinking to yourself, wait a sec, Patrick, haven't you guys done a Project Tiny Mini Micro feature on this system before? The answer is, well, kind of yes. So we're gonna do something that's a little bit different for Project Tiny Mini Micro in this installment. Specifically, if you don't know, Project Tiny Mini Micro, we've been taking a look at all of these one liter PCs from Lenovo, HP, and Dell. And we've already taken a look at this kind of family from Lenovo a couple times. Now we've done, of course, the Intel Xeon versions, but this is an AMD Ryzen version. So this is not the Intel, this is, this is Ryzen. I know a lot of people want Ryzen in here because of the AMD GPU. This does have that. Now, specifically the reason that we're looking at this again is because the first time we did it, we did it with the Ryzen Pro 4000 series. But, you know, frankly, the Ryzen Pro 5000 series was definitely a huge upgrade in these systems. And so, you know, it's kind of like one of those things that I really wanted to do. I had previously ordered one of these units, but the order got canceled. So I wasn't able to actually show you that. So we had to do the Ryzen 4000 series at the time. But the 5000 series actually is a huge upgrade. And so I really wanted to go over that. And specifically, we finally got this unit. But since we've already gone over a lot of this, instead of just looking at this like, oh, here's what we got, what we're going to do instead is we're going to actually take this unit and do something a little different. Now, it's pretty easy to go and have a Windows-based machine. I mean, these things all have Windows licenses or a lot of them have Windows licenses. So it's really easy to have like a Windows, just desktop PC. But what's something I know a lot of folks are doing is they're actually turning these into servers. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this machine and I'm gonna show you what a server upgrade would look like. And we're actually gonna upgrade a whole bunch of different things in it. So we're gonna do that in a little bit. But first, let's get to the system and we're just gonna do a very quick overview just so you can see what's going on here. Okay, on the front of the system, we have a combo audio jack. We also have a USB type C and a type A port. One thing that I wish Lenovo did was actually just to put like a 10 because the type A port is a USB 3.2 gen two port, which means it's 10 gigabit per second port while the USB C port is only a five gigabit per second port. I just kind of wish that, you know, Lenovo did that because it'd be way easier to see. Oh, and you also have the power button. Now looking at the back of the system, what we get is something that's kind of fairly standard for these one liter PCs, specifically let's Get to USB again. Here we have four type A ports. Now, two of those are USB 3.2 Gen 1, so five gigabit per second type A ports, and two of them are USB 2 ports. And so that is what it is. Now, in terms of display outputs, we get both a display port as well as an HDMI port. Now, you're going to see our system also has a, another display port, and that's specifically in an optional slot. Now, there are two little optional slots here, and you can get things here like you get VGA ports, serial ports, you can get nothing. There's all kinds of different options. You can get another HDMI port. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of different options. And so if you're configuring the system on Lenovo's website, certainly go look at what you can get. If you're buying these things secondhand, I would also say double check what you're gonna get in that slot because you know, sometimes it's just a nice little bonus to get something that you want. Now, in terms of networking, we get a one gigabit ethernet port and we also get Wi-Fi. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Wi-Fi and we're actually gonna upgrade it when we get inside the system. So something I do wanna note is that on the back of the system, you're not gonna see things like that quad port NIC option stuff because inside we do not have that PCIe slot that we see in some of Lenovo's higher end systems. Example of that, you know, so this on the bottom, this is actually the M75Q Tiny Gen 2. Above that is the Lenovo Think Center M90Q Tiny Gen 2. We've done a piece on that as well. We'll link that in the description. And, you know, specifically, this one actually is the Intel one. And this actually does have things like the PCIe slot that you can get a riser for, and then, you know, get, uh, you know, expansion cards or something like that and put them in there. So this does not have that because it's a lower end unit than the Intel unit in, you know, Lenovo stack. But at the same time, that doesn't necessarily mean that all of the systems in the market are low end systems just because they're based on AMD. AMD definitely has a very competitive part in terms of CPU performance, which we're gonna see in a little bit, but you're gonna see that this top one is actually the HP Elite Desk 805 G6 Mini. And that one we're gonna be doing a review of in a little bit later, but this is definitely more of a high-end unit or a higher-end unit, kind of more analogous to like how Lenovo has their high-end, like the M90Q Tiny Gen 2s, like kind of that high-end uh, unit in this one liter space. So, so HP actually does have the high-end. Lenovo's kind of still in that kind of mid-range. It's kind of more maybe like an M80Q or something like that competitor. And so that's kind of where this M75Q Tiny Gen 2 fits in. OK, 
Okay, that's enough of that. So let's get inside the system. If we go look inside the system, you just basically, you have a screw in the back, you pop off the top and boom, you're inside. Now basics here, we did not get a two and a half inch drive, but if you did get a two and a half inch drive, you basically have a SATA spot. But you can put something like a hard drive or maybe a SATA SSD. You can put that right here, no problem. You also will see that we have the CPU assembly up here. We're gonna show you some photos uh, and you know maybe some just kind of looks at what the CPU looks like. The CPU in the system, as I mentioned earlier, is an AMD Ryzen Pro and it's a Ryzen 5 Pro 5650GE processor, which is a 35 watt TDP processor. Lenovo has a bunch of different options, but the big thing here is that we get the new AMD cores. And so this actually does perform a lot better than the previous generation, the 4000 series. This is the six core version. There is an eight core version. I just couldn't get it to review. Sorry guys, I'm doing the best I can, but we're going to talk about performance when we get to it in a little bit. One thing that I really do like is that this two and a half inch thing is so easy to just take off and you just pop it out like this. I don't even have to look at it and I can do it. There are no tools to go put a two and a half inch drive in here. So it's super easy. And frankly, I really like this design. Now, what you're gonna see underneath is that there is a little mezzanine card for the extra display port. And so that's kind of where that would go in the chassis. Of course, those are changeable and they are orderable and configurable and all that kind of stuff. So you could see different things over there. On the other side, what we actually got was Wi-Fi. And what we actually got then in terms of Wi-Fi when we originally got this is this little guy right here, which is an Intel 9260 NGW, I think, uh, Wi-Fi module. And basically when I looked at that, I was like, wait a sec, wait, this doesn't have Wi-Fi 6? Like what the heck is going on? And so that is something that we replaced. We're gonna talk about that pretty soon. Okay, now again, to get in the back of the system, you basically just pop off this back cover and now you have access to your memory and your storage. Now, taking a look at the stock version of this, you can see that we only have one SO DIMM. So this is a dual channel memory CPU, but we only have one channel memory. Now, something I would definitely say for anybody that runs these systems, you always wanna have two DIMMs here because not only do you get a little bit more memory, which is always kind of good, but the other thing is that you get dual channel memory operation and you really are starving the CPU for bandwidth. If you only have a single DIMM, you always wanna have two SO DIMMs here so that way you get dual channel memory and you get that full memory bandwidth. And this is especially the case if you do things like you wanna use that integrated graphics. Now, the other thing that you're gonna see at the bottom is that we have the Samsung I think this is a PM uh, 981A NVMe SSD. And basically this is at the bottom and you're gonna see that we have an M.2 slot and then this uses Lenovo's kind of tool, this little blue thing. Now, of course, depending on which SSD you get, it may look a little different than this, but there is something that is very important down here. And that's specifically, you can see that there's a set of pads that are not populated for a second M.2 slot. When we look at something like the M90Q Gen 2 Tiny, you're gonna see that we actually get two M.2 SSDs in this area, but in this system, we only get one. Now, before we get into the customization and looking at Proxmox and all that kind of stuff, what I really wanna do just really quickly is just note real fast that the AMD Ryzen 5000 series doesn't have a chipset in this thing. Like You don't see a chipset that's on the board like you would see in an Intel version. And so all of the features that you would have from a platform perspective perspective are actually on the chip itself. And that has a big implication because Lenovo is enabling AMD PSB or platform secure boot on the system, which means that the CPU, this AMD Ryzen Pro, you know, 55650 uh, GE processor is actually vendor locked to Lenovo systems. So the BIOS and the firmware are signed with Lenovo's keys. Those blow fuses in the AMD PSB. So the security processor complex will have these field programmable fuses and those actually are blown, which means that the CPU is locked to Lenovo system. So you can't take this out and put it in the HP system and have a boot, for example. We have a entire video on that we just did. So go check it out. You can check out the link in the description for that one. That was originally part of this video, but then it was too long. So we pulled it out and did it as its own video. But let's instead get to kind of upgrading this thing. The first thing I mentioned was that little Wi-Fi module. And one of the really easy things to go do is just get a new Wi-Fi module and put the new Wi-Fi module into the system. And that basically gets you some upgraded Wi-Fi. Now here, just for fun, we're actually using the Intel AX uh, 210, so the Wi-Fi 6E version. Now, personally, when I go do these, typically I'm looking for at least the, you know, Intel AX200 series of chips to go put in here. I just kind of think that those ones tend to be pretty good Wi-Fi parts for these types of systems. And typically, if you do see Wi-Fi 6 in these systems, those are the chips or the uh, M2 cards that come in there. So we're actually replacing the previous Wi-Fi AC version with that, just to go get a little better Wi-Fi, because if you do want to use Wi-Fi, it's just nice to have. And sometimes it's not too expensive to go do. 
But let's get to the back of the system because really, even though this is a six core CPU, you're gonna see that the performance is really good. And so what I wanted to do was really upgrade this to number one, dual channel memory. And then I figured, well, why not just go upgrade it and have a lot of memory? And so what we're actually using is these G-Skill Rip Jaws and they're really not that expensive. They're about 200, I think we're paying like 206, $207 for a pair of 32 gig modules, which gives us a total of 64 gigabytes of memory in this system. We'll put a link in the description. It'll probably end up being an affiliate link or something like that. So we make it compensated as a disclosure, but you can go kind of see the ones that we get off of Amazon. And we think we've gotten like eight sets of them and we're using them in a lot of these tiny mini microsystems these days. So we'll just link those in the description in case you want those. And in terms of the SSD, the SSD that we got with the system was only 256 gigs. So we thought, you know, hey, if we only have a single slot here, now of course we have the two and a half inch that we can use as well, but if we only have one NVMe slot, we might as well get a bigger SSD. And so we got the Sabrent Rocket Q one terabyte SSD. Now this is definitely not the highest end drive that you can get on the market. It's not even the highest end drive that Sabrent has. But at the end of the day, this is a decent drive for this class of system. And I think it's just perfectly fine for what we use. We tend not to use like super write heavy drives or anything like that in these systems. So I think this is just fine. And what we're gonna do with this system, which is really interesting, is we're actually gonna go and install Proxmox VE. Now, if you don't know what Proxmox is, it's basically a Debian-based hypervisor solution that is not only really just a hypervisor, but also does things like, you know, you can run VMs on it, but you can run containers, you can run things like Ceph as your kind of like scale-out storage. It has ZFS already integrated. I mean, there's a whole bunch of functionality in Proxmox. It's become very popular and we've been using it for, I don't know, like probably close to a decade or something like that. So if we've been using it for a long time, it's an absolutely awesome, thing. And so we can actually install that on these Project Tiny Mini Micro Nodes and then have these really low cost, kind of small, easy to put anywhere, even in a small apartment or something like that. You can go and have a virtualization host that's relatively quiet. So let's get to that install. Okay. Now actually installing an OS on this is pretty easy. What we actually did for this one specifically is we are using just a tiny pilot, which is a little Raspberry Pi IKBM solution. We have a review of that. You also see that in the description, but we're just using that to go and install an OS on here. And specifically what we're going to do is put Proxmox VE. And the normal process is actually pretty easy to go through. The one thing you do usually have to do is turn off secure boot because if you have windows, that secure boot will be on and it'll start throwing errors. So usually what you'll do is have to go into BIOS. You have to turn that secure boot off. Also, while you're in there, I'll just double check and make sure that all the virtualization options are on. On ours, they are. So we're gonna definitely you know, need that for a virtualization solution. And then you just kind of keep installing Proxmox as normal. Now, as you go through the installation process, one of the things that you're going to see is that you're gonna install, and in our specific case, we're gonna install on that one terabyte NVMe SSD. But one other thing that you could do is if you could find like an inexpensive, like, you know, SATA drive or something like that, uh, that could be something that you put in the two and a half inch bay and maybe use that for your installation. Uh, I don't know, it's just there. So maybe you'd wanna go do it, but here we're just using the NVMe drive because it's one terabyte and that's fine for a system like this. We have network storage anyway. A couple of things to just note, you do definitely wanna use the wired NIC kind of as your primary NIC as you're doing the setup. You can actually turn on the wireless NIC later Later, and you might actually want to go do that. And we will talk about that in a later video, but that you do actually have two NICs in the system. Technically one of them's wireless. So, uh, you know, we really, really want to put a lot of like clustering stuff on there, but you know, the wired NIC is definitely a good solution. And once we've gone through the Proxmox installation, uh, basically we're all set. Now we have guides on the STH main site in terms of, you know, what to do when you get to, into Proxmox, we're using Proxmox VE7 here, and you can totally go set this up. And now you have an entire virtualization environment with six cores, 16 threads, you have 64 gigabytes of memory and a one terabyte SSD as your local storage. You can of course hook up external storage or your network storage to that as well. And so you have a lot of different options in terms of what you can do with Proxmox in a little system like this. Okay, now the big thing about the Ryzen 5000 series and why we're doing this one again is really just the fact that the Ryzen 5000 series is when we got Zen 3. So we got the new microarchitecture, but we also got the you know, unified level three caches. And so that is a big deal for a system like this. I mean, that is absolutely a huge deal, let's face it. So in terms of performance, what we see is that we're actually very competitive with the Ryzen 7, and that will be the 4750GE that we looked at last time in this exact same system 
system, right? We're, we're looking at the same system and yet you get performances pretty close. Now, sometimes one wins over the other and that's pretty true in a lot of benchmarks. And you see, you see things that like, you know, if you have like an Nginx benchmark or something like that, you actually see that, you know, just sometimes you just need more cores. And in those kind of things where you need more cores, eight cores better, but in some things where you can get higher clock speeds and actually take advantage of those, the six core and Zen three actually puts you ahead. So of course you're probably thinking, Patrick, don't you want the eight core model? And the answer to that is absolutely I do. We just don't have it yet. And I have one on order and hopefully we're gonna get that from HP if they actually build the system and ship it. Now, in terms of power consumption, these are 35 watt APUs. And so you do see that we actually have a much smaller power supply than you would expect, I think on a, a system with this level of performance. And specifically, we still have only a 65 watt PSU. I think really part of the fact that you have such a small PSU in the system, and this is like really what we would see from like an Intel, like back, like an Intel system, like a Core i5, like 6,500, uh, 7,500T, something like that. This is definitely on, feels like it's an older generation PSU and just having a smaller PSU in a system like this, because Intel CPUs, even though they're 35 watt TDP, have definitely climbed up. So we typically see like 90 plus watt uh, power supplies with those Intel based units. But with this AMD unit, you know, frankly, 65 watt was actually usable. We didn't quite get up to 60, five watts, we uh, you know got into like the mid fifties, but at the same time, you can definitely get pretty close. You do have options. This is using the kind of standard Lenovo rectangle, just the same thing that they use in their laptops and stuff like that. So it's that rectangle power adapter. And so you can get bigger ones if you want pretty easily, but 65 watts, I actually thought this was pretty low power for how much performance we're getting. Okay, now in all these Project Tiny Mini Micro videos, we always have key lessons learned, and that's what I want to get to next. Now, let's just kind of talk through a couple of those key lessons learned. I think the first one, if you have not seen our AMD PSB and vendor locking Ryzen CPUs using AMD PSB with Lenovo, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out in the description. You definitely need to if you're gonna buy a system like this. In fact, I think it's important that the entire market sees that, so you should probably go share that with some of your colleagues and friends just to make sure that everybody's aware of what's going on with these Ryzen CPUs. The second thing that I noticed with the system is that the Ryzen 5000 series is absolutely awesome. I mean, even, you know, people talk about it in terms of, you know, the desktop parts, but when you get down to even these like 35 watt parts, I actually think that Zen 3 is a huge upgrade. We've seen it on the server side. I mean, everybody knows that Zen 3 at this point is a big upgrade and definitely is in this space. These things have been extraordinarily hard to find. I mean, I've been trying to get one for months and I finally was able to get one just a couple weeks ago. And so I'm very excited by it, but at the same time, you know, if you can get them, I I do think that the Ryzen 5000 series is super cool and I can't wait to go try that 5000 eight core chip. When we look at it from a competitive standpoint, I actually think that HP has a somewhat better platform. I mean, there are kind of two ways to look at it. I think from a serviceability standpoint, Lenovo definitely has the best in this generation. They're about, they're definitely beyond Dell and they probably are beyond HP as well. And just kind of working on the Ryzen APU system. So the Elite Desk 800, 5G6 mini, and then this M75Q Tiny Gen 2, and kind of working on them side by side, you definitely think like, okay, Lenovo is way easier to work on, but at the same time, HP has, I think, a platform that is much better in terms of just these Ryzen systems. And that's not even talking about PSB or anything like that. I think it's just the actual platform and what you can put in the system is a lot better because HP actually, I think, positions the Ryzen APU units as kind of like higher end units than Lenovo does. Price-wise, they're actually pretty similar. And so what we actually have coming, and I'm really excited by this, is we already have the 805 G6 mini, and we've already been kind of working on that, but we have the G8 mini, uh, uh, we have two different configurations because uh, I'm hoping like maybe HP decides to build one of them. I don't know, um, but we're going to definitely show you some things. And especially with this virtualization host side, I think you're actually going to say like, oh my gosh, HP has a killer solution. And especially with the G8 ones, I think that people are gonna be like, whoa, that's awesome. And I can't wait to show you guys those, but we have to kind of hope that HP will actually go build them for me and ship them. Um, don't know, but we're trying here. So I do kind of wish that Lenovo brought its AMD units up to parity with its Intel solutions and add things like the dual M.2 slots because you know that is present on the HP solution and HP also has things like they can have the PCIe slot as well. And so I just kind of think that HP has a higher end unit and I'd like to see Lenovo up level their AMD units and not kind of make them second class citizens because the performance is absolutely awesome. Now, if you like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on the notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.